So I switched over to another uh, microphone. I was using the SM58. Now I'm using this condenser mic and you guys are gonna hear everything. There's some construction going on outside. So my apologies. I just gotta try out a new mic and see how this works out. If not, I'm going back to the trusty SM58. So over here at Pro Tools Expert, check it out, iLock 3 announced. When I saw this, I did a double take, like, wait a minute, what? So as you can see, it looks a lot more durable. I like the fact that they engraved the name, that's pretty cool. But I'm not gonna go through any of these, what it's made out of, and as you can see, the serial number is engraved right at the back, which is pretty cool. And what's important is, what are the differences here? They say more storage capability and it's faster. So the third gen could hold about 1,500 licenses depending on the license type and the old one around 500 licenses. Personally, I've never ever maxed out the first gen or the second one. I know some people that have, but I haven't. Also, zero downtime. As soon as the third gen is available, you'll be able to purchase that. If you currently have your ZDT for your second gen, you can't switch it over unless it's a time for your renewal, then you can do that. But what's really important here is this. Do you need to buy this new iLock? And I'm gonna just read this. Note that some software requires second generation or better iLocks. Better iLocks. So you know what that means? Eventually, some of our favorite plugins are gonna require this only. It's not gonna be backwards compatible. Right now, it's backward compatible, but that might change. So over here, we have a picture of all three iLocks first gen, second gen, and third gen. And I can't finish this video without discussing the first gen iLock. I prefer to use the iLock over any system. I love serial numbers, they're great to have, but the iLock's a lot better. I can go to anybody's place, plug my iLock in, use my software, take it out and go. What I do hate is software that requires you to connect to a server to validate, you lose an activation when you deactivate, and then you do it multiple times and then you max out and you can't use your software no more. I really hate that. Listen, I know people that have a USB hub with four or five different iLocks and using the Steinberg uh, dongle system, using other different dongles. Yeah, it does take up a USB, but it's so convenient. Some companies just give you a license file, you put it in the directory and it runs. That's cool too. But again, that's something else I have to walk with. Put another USB drive and then plug that in and transfer files or a registry file where if you double click that registry file, it activates and then you got to go and deactivate it by double clicking the second registry file that deactivates the system. Kind of annoying. So back to the first gen iLock. Here's what happened. Some smart person using a debugger figured out how to deattach the protection from the executable. Same thing with the Mac. What happens when they do that, you can run the software without the iLock. Remember when the program is made, when any of your favorite plugins and your Pro Tools, when all of that's developed and compiled, it's not compiled with the protection. They use the piece, anti-privacy software. It wraps, it packs your favorite plugin, favorite executable with their system. So when you double click that system and you load the executable, it goes through each line of code and it it looks at your iLock, if it has the information that it requires, it continues, if it doesn't, it just doesn't load. And once it has it, it loads into your RAM and you're good to go. That's the short version of how this stuff works. Version two came out and it was great for a while until somebody figured out how to unpack it again. And when I read that, I, I knew it. I figured it's only a matter of time before the company tries to protect their investment again and they come out with a different version of the iLock. And yeah, here we go. So it's one of those cat and mouse chases. I remember Pro Tools Expert covered something like this. If you guys remember, there was a time when we had Pro Tools Ellie. Somebody out there figured out how to use Pro Tools without an inbox. Digit Design at the time saw that that was possible. Then they finally released a version of Pro Tools that you can deattach from your hardware and we can still do that now, and which is great. So there you go, guys. This is how the iLock works. If I confused you, my apologies, but if this is the first time watching one of my videos, press that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. Also, I have a video that I made specifically on the iLock system. I'm gonna link it. You should check that video out as well. Just make sure you check the description. This is Ray, and I'm out of here. Later, guys.